Hello and welcome to our DeFi Render Quick Start tutorials. In lesson three, I will show you how to visualize the daylight scene using DeFi Render. We'll follow the steps explained in lesson two. This is the final render of the example. We can find some information in the lower left corner. The final resolution is 4K and rendering time is 86 seconds. My GPU is NVIDIA RTX 2060. Like I said in the previous lesson, the reason why we choose this scene as the example is that this space is mainly illuminated by the bounce light. This is a great opportunity to demonstrate the advantages of DeFi Render's real-time global illumination. So without further ado, let's get started. Step 1. Open the model and check if it is render ready for a DeFi render. We mainly focus on the following aspects. First, check if the normal directions of the faces are all facing outwards. We can switch to the monochrome display mode in SketchUp. We need to make sure all the faces are white. Second, check if all the material textures and UVs are in the right place. This thing is very well textured and ready to render. Third, check if there are missing faces or overlapping faces. These problems can cause rendering artifacts. We need to make sure our model is clean and complete. Fourth, when we are rendering steel frames for interior design, we need to leave enough room for the camera, otherwise the camera may move outside the wall. Fifth, the wall should be made into a solid model or at least have front and back faces because the real-time rendering engine usually don't calculate the back side of the face. If we use a single-sided wall, sunlight will shine through the model or the light will leak in the corners of the room. If everything is confirmed, we save model before import it. Then, we can launch the D5 render. On the startup interface, we can find the import SketchUp button. Click it, find our SketchUp model in the browser, double click on it and wait a moment. Ok, now our model is imported into D5 render. Let me introduce the interface for you. At the top is the title bar. Below the title bar is menus where you can find some commonly used tools. Below the menu is the toolbar. We can use these tools to quickly set up artificial lights or move and rotate the assets. In the left side of the interface is the editing panel. All the parameters and settings are packed here. Basically, most tags can be done using the toolbar and editing panel. The last part is our rendering viewpoint. You can preview your project here. In the upper right corner, we have two different navigation modes, 3D bird view and first person walking view. I prefer walking view when I'm creating interior images, so I choose the foot icon. In the walking mode, you can use WASD to move your camera and Q or E to move the camera up and down. Hold down the right mouse button to change the direction of the camera. Next, I will try to find a good composition for our scene. When we find the right composition, we click on the view icon to switch to the view editing panel. Adjusting this parameter will change the field of view of the camera. Then we choose two-point perspective in the drop-down menu or just press F8 on the keyboard. If we want to save the current composition, we click on the list button and click this plus icon to add a new view. Add a new view means you save the information of the camera and the information of the sunlight too. If we just refine a view and do not need to add a new view, we can press this update icon to save the new information. Let's move on to the next step to adjust the sunlight and skylight settings. We click this icon to switch to the outside editing panel. This basically contains all the functions and parameters of the slider is basically a pre controls the sunlight intensity, sun height, and angle, color at the same time. Or you can not to tweak this parameter too high. These are the sun height and angle. We can use it to find a suitable sun angle. And this is the color temperature of the sun. Lower values makes the color warmer and higher values makes the color towards white or even blue. The source angle parameter is actually the size of the sun. 
This will affect the edge of the shadow. Lower values will make the edge of shadow appear sharper and higher values means the light source is bigger and will make shadow appear blurry. You can adjust to a suitable value according to your own scene. Skylight parameter controls the brightness of the sun and we can change the color temperature of the sky too. And the last part is HDRI environment. D5 Render can use HDRI environment textures to get natural lighting and reflections. D5 Render comes with 7 preset HDRI maps and you can also load customized HDRI maps as you like. Please note that many high quality HDRI maps contain the sunlight information. In this situation, you can even turn down the sunlight parameter to zero and use the HDRI sound instead. This kind of sound is fixed into the HDRI image and can't change the height angle, but we can rotate the whole image horizontally to change the direction of the sound. In this example, I will choose the overcast HDRI as our environment. As you can see, after we set up the daylight, the room is still very dark now. This is because the current exposure value is not suitable for the interior scene. We click the filter icon and find the exposure parameter. Increasing this value will improve the overall brightness of the whole image. Now it looks much better. This is the main content of this lesson. After all six lessons are completed, we will get this final render. D5 Render's natural lighting system is very straightforward and easy to use. In the next lesson, I will show you how to use artificial lights to light up a closed space without windows. Alright, thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next lesson.